you imagine making pro-level animations in CapCut so good that people think they were made in After Effects? It sounds impossible, but the truth is, once you understand the art of scene crafting, you can create powerful motion without any complex effects, and suddenly, even CapCut becomes more than enough. It might sound exaggerated, but all you really need is a creative mind and the passion to create and edit. If you take a quick look at some videos and animations, you'll notice that every scene is first designed and then animated with motion. The way each scene is colored and composed is always filled with emotion. And that's something channels like Magnets Media is very aware of. So crafting a scene is one of the most important elements that can impact a video's quality. And if you really learn how to design a scene, it can be a total game changer. After that, VFX can help a lot too. One important thing you should know about animating a scene is this. The more exaggerated and cartoonish your motion is, the more impact it has. Just think about the cartoons we used to watch as kids. When Jerry wanted to hit Tom with something, Tom would become flat, turn red, or look like he was about to explode. This exaggerated behavior is very common in animation and we still use it a lot today. So I decided to take one of my own scenes that I originally made in After Effects and recreate it in CapCut to show you how simple it can be when you have the right information and enough creativity. Oh, and you'll need a bunch of assets too, including the character, background, other layers, and a few visual effects to create what we need. You can download everything from the link in the description. So first, let's go to the folder we imported into CapCut, find our road background, and drag it into the timeline. Now, before doing anything, let's change our scene resolution to 3800 by 2160, which is 4K. So when we zoom, we don't lose too much quality. Also, let's scale up the background just a little bit and then zoom out the composition window so we can see what we're doing. Okay, now let's go to the mask section and grab the pen tool because I want to mask the sky part and add a sky video underneath it. So where the skyline is visible, I draw my mask. Then I click on this icon to invert the mask, so only the bottom part appears. You can add a little feather to the mask if you want, for better blending. Now let's add our sky video footage into the timeline and shorten the clip to match the bottom layer. Okay, now I'm going to grab the road layer and bring it on top of the sky layer. As you can see, now the sky is moving and it makes the scene more dynamic. Let's just move the sky layer a little bit up using position so it fits perfectly with the road layer. And don't forget to scale this one up just a bit. It already looks beautiful. Now let's fix the color of the sky and match it with the bottom layer. CapCut added this feature where you can do it with just one click. So select the sky layer and go to the adjust section. You'll see the color match option. If you click it, it matches the color automatically, but if you want to do it manually, you can use the same settings I'm using for better coloring. All we have to do is play around with exposure, temperature, highlights, and contrast to give us that same dark, warm tone as the road. Okay, I think it's looking pretty cool. Now let's find our character and add it to the timeline. And if you want to use your logo, you can also import your logo and place it on your character's head. Okay, now all you have to do is select the logo and character layers, right click and create a compound clip. We should always keep everything organized. Now let's scale the character down and place it on the road. Make sure it's not too big or too small. Also, let's go to the adjust section and match the color with the rest of the scene. It looks like it needs a bit more contrast, so let's increase the contrast to make it look bolder. Okay, I think this is fine. Now let's select the sky and road layers and create another compound clip as our background. Now, in my original one, there's an anvil that drops from the top, smashes the character, and the blood splashes into the camera. So let's import our anvil into the timeline. Before anything, 
go to the adjust section and do a color match. Now we need to create position keyframes. The first keyframe where I'm marking is where the anvil lands. Then go back to the beginning of the layer and move the anvil up out of the screen. Just a couple of things to keep in mind. Since the anvil is heavy, the movement should be very fast and sudden. So we keep the keyframes very close together. Now let's ease our keyframes. Go to keyframe animation, select both keyframes and from the curves menu, choose cubic in. I'm going to make it even faster, so you can grab the bezier handle and straighten it so the movement ends very fast. Let's just play around with the speed of the keyframes to improve it. And for a little bounce effect, let's add another keyframe and move the anvil just a bit up. This third keyframe should be very close to the second one. Okay, this looks good. It's like when the anvil hits the ground, the ground has a bit of an elastic effect. So it goes down, and then the anvil goes up. We should give this bounce keyframe to the background as well. But first, let's select the character layer and go to the mask section. Choose the split mask, rotate it, and move the mask up. We want to keyframe the mask as well. So before the anvil lands, we set a keyframe. And when the anvil lands, we move the mask down and create another keyframe. It's like the character disappears as the anvil lands, I just keep the character's feet visible under the anvil. Now let's give the background the bounce too. Select the background, and just before the anvil lands, create a position keyframe. Then when the anvil hits, move the background up, and one frame later, move it back to its original place. Now here we can add our debris ground VFX to make the scene more dynamic. Grab the footage and drop it into the timeline on top of the anvil layer. Now, I forgot to show you something that really makes your work easier. Right where the anvil hits, you can add a marker. This way, even if the layer isn't selected, you always know where the impact happens. Now, I'm going to match the debris footage with the hit. Let's cut a couple of frames from the beginning. Also, add a position keyframe for the debris, so it matches the bounce effect with the other footage. It's a bit slow, so go to the speed section and speed it up a little so the ground debris happens faster. Next, I'll drop this blood PNG into the timeline, scale it down, and place the layer under the anvil. The blood layer should start right when the anvil hits. Now I add a blood splash into the timeline above all the layers. Let's rotate it 180 degrees and place it on the top left of the screen. Also, make sure the layer starts exactly when the anvil hits. It looks a bit unnatural right now, but we'll fix it. First, do the color match. Then go to Effects and search for Blur. Drag and drop the blur onto the layer and set the value around 35. This gives the scene depth, like a real depth of field. And finally, let's give the blood splash a position keyframe for the bounce when the anvil hits. We're almost done with this part. Just trim the layers based on the timing you have in mind. Now drop the fog green screen footage into the timeline. Go to remove background and use chroma key to remove the green color. If the fog still looks a bit green, just play around with the settings to fix it. Now go to the blend mode and decrease the opacity a lot. This way it doesn't feel too distracting. Then trim this layer as well.
Finally, select all the layers and create a compound clip. Now let's do the zooming. Here, I'm going to zoom in on the axe, position the clip in the middle of the screen, and create keyframes for that. Then around the one second mark, I'll zoom back to the original size and position and create another keyframe. Now let's open the keyframe graph and choose a curve for our keyframes. Here you can choose either circular ease or cubic ease, where it starts slow, gets fast in the middle, and ends slow again. You should choose the same curve for scale, Y position, and X position as well. It's good, but I'm going to go with cubic ease because it's smoother. Also, let's grab the second keyframe and move it a couple of frames forward, right where the anvil hits. Now, I'm also going to make a match cut transition to another scene, so let's create a third keyframe on position around the two-second mark, then select only the position keyframe and choose the cubic in curve. I think it's better to move the third keyframe forward as well. This way, after we zoom back, the clip starts to move very slowly to the right and then ends fast at the end, so we can cut to another scene smoothly. Okay, now let's trim our clip right when the third keyframe ends, so we can go to another scene. Now go to the folder and import the room into the timeline. First, I'm going to zoom into the room so I have space to create a match cut. Now we should position the room to the right and create a keyframe. Then a couple of frames forward, move it to the center and create another keyframe. Now open the keyframe animation, select both keyframes, and from the curves menu choose Cubic Out. Grab the bezier handle of the first keyframe and straighten it to 90 degrees so the clip starts fast and ends slow. As you can see, the transition is very smooth. Now I'm going to create scale keyframes as well. After the position keyframe, move a couple of frames forward and create a scale keyframe. Then a couple of frames after that, zoom into the scene a lot. From the curves menu, choose cubic in. Grab the bezier handle of the second keyframe and straighten it so it starts slow and ends very fast at the end. This way, it feels like we're zooming into black after this keyframe. Now just trim this layer until the last keyframe, and we're done.